So we gave away two charity frog hunts last year at my daughter's charity, which we're doing it again this year, last weekend of September. You can go to miamu.org to check that out. But Which, we, by the way, Jace, that's yeah. amazing. I, you know, I, I've heard from two or three people that are sponsoring different parts of it, and everybody is so touched because it's not just about Mia – and what she's overcome, but you guys are helping a ton of kids. I mean, I mean it, it's, we a, had it's a, a great, great ministry and, yeah, you well, know. Well, thank you. It, it's very moving. I mean, we had 25 of the families that we've helped come on day two of the event last year. I mean, that, their whole family. We paid for them to come in. We got them a hotel, and then we spent a day out there. We kind of had our little spiritual therapy sessions with everybody. It's it's weird you get that many families in a room and you're talking about the same types of struggles. It's very uh, enlightening. And for those that don't know, we just assume everybody does. Uh, Mia had a cleft palate. I mean, a bad one. Uh, yeah. And and so she's gone through surgeries, and so that was featured a lot on the show. And so out of that, they've started this Mia Moo Fund, which basically yeah. helps other families kind of walk along through the surgeries and different things. Like yeah, that. and it's very expensive. You know, you can imagine. I mean, I've said this many times. My daughter has never gone six, week, six weeks without going to see a doctor in her entire life. And how many and major surgeries now? Ten? Depends on your uh, definition well, of major, but around ten, and she'll have some more. And that people think they have a misconception uh, about what happens. You don't fix anything. You just manage the condition since up, she didn't have a palate. She didn't have any palate, you know, where you, where your tongue goes to the roof of your mouth. There was nothing there. It was just a hole. So, uh, when they try to fuse that back together, you're always going to have problems because you're growing. It doesn't grow correctly. So you got to go back in there. Sometimes you got to break bones, move the jaw forward. I mean, it, and it affects eating and teeth and just mainly something. eating, breathing and talking. Yeah. Those are the three areas they concentrate on. So we help families. Uh, it was her idea. It wasn't our idea. I think she was eight when she said, well, when am I going to start telling my story? After an event one night, I had done, we were on a plane and I was like, what do you mean? And so she wrote her speech. I said, well, go home and write your speech. I read the speech. Oh, we just. Missy and I, it was like touching. I was like, it's time for you to tell your story. So we started helping people. But we, the first night, the first day of it, we do an auction. We had a poker tournament last year. So you don't really win. I mean, you do, but you know, you're there. You're, you're we want your money to, charity, right? to go to the charity, you know, but it was fun. But we gave away, or I did, I gave away a frog hunt. But these two people kept going back and forth. And so finally we, we said, I'll do two of them if you'll. I think it was eighteen thousand a piece they paid to go frog hunting. So I took the second one Saturday <laughs> night. Now look, it's at this this woman that I met at the Tebow Foundation. And the money went to the people who are the children that are suffering. Correct. From That's right. And look, one hundred percent of all our money. We're probably the only charity on That's the right. planet. I don't want to say that we're the only one. We're we're possibly the only one that we take one hundred percent of the money. And it goes to the families. Because yeah, you don't have any administration or anything. Well, the yeah. administration, we have one employee, but we pay her. Right. That, that's so like our right. you know, contribution. So anyway, so you never know who's going to show up. Well, I had, I had met this woman who got it. They own a business in Chicago, Illinois, her and her husband, because they had bid on the same type of frog hut I gave one at the Tebow event, which is kind of a cool thing, you know. And so... I never, I never thought hunting frogs would uh, reach that level. Well, look, <coughs> the one at the Tebow event went for a hundred thousand, and three of Times them, three, yeah, three of them did it. So I'm like, for a hundred thousand dollars, you know, because they put me on the spot. You know, Tebow's like, I mean, can you do three? I mean, what am I going to say for three hundred thousand to help the Tebow kids? <laughs> and so again, I love partner. It's another great organization. Yeah. So anyway, but you never know how this is going to go. So the the woman who who got it, she couldn't come, so she sends six of her employees from Chicago, Illinois. So they come to our house. We eat dinner. That's part of what they get, you know. And uh, now when they walked in, it was it was the woman's brother, and then it was five suburban yuppie women i mean we're talking the 
you know, the joggers, the they hadn't the only time they go outside is they're you know running down the road doing yoga. The, the kind of women that I've made constant <laughs> jokes about for the last 25, 30 yeah. years. Well, when life. they walked in, my wife Missy looked at me and said, "You're taking these women." I said, "Oh yeah, babe." I said, but I'm a one woman man, nothing to worry about, you know. But I could tell she was looking like, you know, because I mean they basically look like models. Yeah, don't bring that many foxes to the to the woods. <laughs> yeah, that was a moment of awkwardness, <laughs> and I'm like, babe, look, she was actually fine with it. So we get out there, and you know, for people like that to go out there, things that we take for granted, just riding in a boat, seeing alligators pop up by Catching the boat. Catching frogs. We had a big old carp, you know, jump across. It almost jumped in the boat. Oh, I mean, they're like going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> just, so we get like three. Where, where Yuppie <clears throat> meets the swamp. We get three minutes into this thing, and one of them hollered out, as in like a cry of pain. I knew that was, wasn't normal. And she's yeah. like, something bit me. And I was like, look, things bite you out here because there's bugs, dragonflies. She's like, no. Well, I said, well, let me see. Well, I looked at her hand. It was like twice the size of the other hand. I was like, oh, no, something did bite you. I said, did you see this? Because I could see the mark. But I said, you sure it was a bite? Was it? You know, I was trying to get the description of it. Of course, she's starting to sweat. And she's like, I can't feel my hand. It's tingly, you know. And I was like. Did you get? Did you see what it was? Because it's at night. And she said, well, it looked red. And I said, red. So me and my buddy, we're trying to figure this out because I'm like, we're a long way from a hospital, and her hand is like swelling instantly. And uh, she said, I said, did it have wings? And she said, yeah. So I'm like, oh, we're good. Red wasp. I oh, mean, yeah. What else could it be? Oh, yeah. So I'm like, I'm I got, telling you. I got you. stung yesterday by them, and, they, they, and the guys with me sort of – like you know, what are you gonna do? And I was, I was just going on like it never happened. I said, oh, "Look, wall sting." I said, "They up in that motor, I crank one of them mud motors. Uh-huh. They came out on the air breather and just swarmed me. I almost well, got one today. Well, well, they nailed me a couple of times <laughs> as I was backing out of there. But you and know, I, for us, it's a common thing. For her, she thought she's gonna we're, be dead. We're thrilled." When we noticed that it was a wasp and not a cottonmouth. Oh, mouth. you're well, right. I was like, relief. oh, you're fine. She's like, but look at my hand. I'm like, that's normal. But then I said, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Because look, I see a, what I think is a, a bug. No, like under her skin. And I'm like, hang on just a second. So I grab her hand and I'm looking right here in her wrist. And I was like, what is And I'm, I'm doing this. She said, that's a tattoo. It was a tattoo of a bug on her wrist. <laughs> and I thought, which is why she got stoned. The wasp like, was stinging the bug. Maybe the wasp thought there was a bug on your arm. I was like, that's why we don't do that. <laughs> so they had a good laugh. So uh, you know, Dad, you're out here on the uh, about as far away as you can be from West Monroe, Louisiana, on the river. Water three sides. We got a gate across the road. You got the dogs. You got your ARs. You got you know your whole video surveillance. Video surveillance. Sixty degrees. Exactly. So you're pretty much set. You know you, to to be looking out for trouble, right? And sometimes there was an old boy that showed up here wanting to study the Bible, but he scaled the gate, which was not super smart. He was he was going to crash the gate. Yeah. And he had made some threats against me. The law enforcement showed up, and they said. We're going to have to kill this one, we think. We, yeah, we don't think it was he, a bad deal. And, and I said, please let us study with him and try to convert him before you kill him. They're yeah. like, Because he was threatening the police. and We th- actually did convert him over that. Yeah. But which he was, was wanting to hurt me at first. It's an amazing story. So obviously there's some bad people out there. And, and in fact, studies say that only about 10% of break-ins are planned. Most of them are just crimes of opportunity. Somebody's coming along. They see something that's at your house. They like. They go in. Whatever. So uh, we, our friends from uh, Simply Safe, uh, basically, what they do is they protect your home. Uh, every window, every door, professional monitoring. Uh, there's no contract, hidden fees, any of that kind of stuff. This is you know award-winning security. You see people, you know, who need this. I mean, we're armed. You have the dogs, and but, we have know, gates up on the road. Yeah, yeah. It's gates, not paranoia. But- that these people, the line, these people are 
are, are Simply selling said, yeah. because of paranoia. It's preparedness. That's right. Just be prepared. I think it's right. called peace. Huh? They're trying to give you peace of mind. So That's you don't right. have to, if you hear a noise. Be prepared. When I hear a noise, then I hear the dog bark, and I think, what kind of bark is that? That's right. But that's not exactly peaceful because I then have a hand on the weapon. So they're trying to say, don't Nothing worry wrong about with it. being prepared in this culture we and live in. And not everybody is as, as armed as we are. These for people sure. can help you out. Uh, simply safe, around the yeah. clock monitoring is $15 a month. We think about it, that's not much to be not able to much protect at all. your home, which is pr- really good. Um, so here's what you do. If you'll visit simplysafe.com, simplysafe.com, and then you slash unashamed, you get free shipping in a 60-day risk-free trial. So you don't have to pay anything for the first two months. Um, you got enough. 15 bucks a month? And then, you know, even when you pay, it's only $15 a month. Yeah, and it, look, could, there's it, no could, contracts. it could save your life. No doubt about it. So go to simplysave.com slash unashamed. They'll know that way that you came from Unashamed, our show, uh, and and check these guys out. It's it's worth the chance, and even after that, it's not much money. And it does provide a lot of security for the mind. Peace of mind. No doubt about it. Check them out, simplysave.com slash unashamed. But look, I'm going to tell you this. They, uh, you know, they, got up, they get up on the front of the boat, <clears throat> And, of course, there's eight of us in the boat, me and my partner, and then these six. And you take them through it. You know, I catch the first one to see, but just to see the adrenaline rush that they get. Because they get up there. They all do the same thing. They go to get the frog the first time, and then they're like, nope. <laughs> it, it's, so can't jump, do it. <laughs> can't do it. So then you have to, have to talk. Look, there's, so I catch the frog. let them touch it. I was like, it's slimy. They're strong. You can do this. And it's really, uh, I don't know, it's, it's kind of exciting to watch <laughs> Well, somebody. they donated a huge uh, amount of money. Uh, the reality of roaming around in the woods and water of Louisiana hits them at that point. By the way, uh, your daughter has been remarkably resilient through this whole process. Did you have any outside <clears throat> counseling Sort of, or did you and Missy do the counseling? Look, you, 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 your palate's not there. Your teeth are all. Yeah, you just you. Well, she has a team of doctors. Whoever counseled with that child did yeah. well. That's what I'm she saying. She has a team, and they're all you know, not just thinking of physical. Like she has a really good speech therapist that you know not only so, helps so her with her speech, but just helps her with the emotional aspect. Because, look, the doctors, they're real sensitive about, like, their first day of school. We all got into a room and said, look, yep. this is going to be tough because you're making your grand appearance. I mean, she's five years old, but she yep. looks different, and so they talk about that. But as this process goes on, they're they're worried less about what they look like. You know, more other people, that's their concern. They're like, oh, she looks great. She's more concerned about eating chicken nuggets. Yeah. You know, she'll have a surgery. She's where, concerned with just so things will function properly. Well, right. She had a she one time she had to go on a six month liquid diet. Well, that was the hardest thing ever because she couldn't eat chicken nuggets. I mean, yeah. we tried to grind them up, you know, but it because I mean that's her number one, you know, food source. Al, wouldn't so, you agree that she is remarkably resilient? Well, I just think about. It. I mean, I've had one surgery <laughs> in my whole life. You know, and I was like, oh, I don't ever want to do that again. But, I mean, if Ooh. I was a child having to face it again and again, some of the things they've had to do. Yeah, they're brutal. I mean, I mean they a are. Couple of the, a couple of the post deals she had, one of them, I remember they were having, you guys had to turn a screw literally in her jaw every day. And it was excruciating. We were moving her jaw every day for like three months. Like a screwdriver months. in her jaw. You know? By a screwdriver and you turning it and it's moving. Yeah, you what, know, I was driving, not, what I was driving at is... For her to come out of there with, uh, with the personality and all, yeah. and that's that's gone with it. She has really, it's remarkable. like oh, like that's the rednecks nice. would say, she has sucked it up. She has. Well, so, I, was, so I, I just want to know: was there a cadre of people? Yeah, that were counseling there her, or even her surgeons and stuff. They've been there from the beginning. It's right? a big team. Yeah, yeah, most of them. Well, the, her doctor, her first doctor retired, and so one of his, yeah, that you know, it's weird. Is these doctors who do this at this level? They have a, like a team that walks around with them at all times because they're because the talent level of these doctors are off the charts. But they've invented stuff. These guys have yeah. during uh, Mia's process, right? My, my daughter had these 
the second ever surgery, uh, it's a complicated procedure. But, you know, because when he said, I developed this new surgery that keeps the kids from having to wear this headgear for six months. I mean, it well, they screw it, it in. Liter- yeah, they skull. literally <laughs> screw two pieces of metal over your head into your head that you have to wear for six months. Yeah, the one other thing, too, is it seems to me that uh, y'all are gathering up money to help these folks that are going through this. Because I would think, Jace, you would know better than me, but the expense of that many surgeries at that level. Oh, good night. So this, well, it's so much that when we I first— I hate for you to tell the audience how much out-of-pocket that's been involved, whether you had insurance or recovery. Yeah, well, I've, I've spent six figures myself. That's with insurance, but, you know, out of my pocket, it, it yep. just— it, it's just the way it is, you know, and because it's like I said, you don't factor in taking your kid to a doctor every six weeks. Nope. You start piling that money up. Just but from some of these doctors, uh, I think you told me they will fly to foreign countries where where the the people are too poor to even That's do right. anything. So, Our first so doctor they, for every surgery he did in the U.S. for money, he did one in a foreign country for free. Which is awesome. That's but, a noble. That's a noble. No, that was awesome. a noble man. And uh, to my, you know, to get back to the the you know women and and the frogs, we had this at the end. We said we go through Spider Alley. Well, they thought that was just the name of. There, uh, we were like, do you want to go through Spider Alley? They were like, oh yeah, you know, because we've seen all these alligators and everything. Well, it literally is. You go webs. through a tunnel. With brush on both sides, and look, these spiders are some of them are as big as your hand. Oh yeah, I've seen them. And a they're all time. hanging. Right, we're like they everybody look deadly, has to but get they're out. Not. They're right. That's right. <laughs> I have never seen. I mean, they were literally terrified, and I thought one of the women was going to jump out of the boat, and I, she was like. I got to get out of this boat. Yeah. I was like, if you get out of, jump out of this boat, you will never. What's in it. the water is worse <laughs> yeah. than what's in the air. <laughs> <laughs> but well, what's funny is I told myself because you know you got eight people in the boat, and you know you're putting these women in awkward positions because they're laying down, and but I I had and they're all filming all this, but I made up my mind. All right, I'm fixed to be with you know five supermodel looking women. I am I'm only going to do this in a way that they would never think, you know, that I'm going to look at them in an inappropriate way or but I had to get my mind ready cuz I mean you just think about it when's the last time you you know you went frog hunting with, you know, five women that looked like they were models. I, I don't know? even sit down with a woman for a Bible study without multiple witnesses on the premise. <laughs> yeah, <good point. laughs> well, I thought about well, Phil, I want to tell, talk to you about some issues I have. I said, I'll get the group together. Miss Kay and I will sit down and we'll have some friends over and we'll, but that's the only way I'll do it because of the times. Well, when I got back in the next morning, cause you know, I didn't get in two o'clock in the morning and i took six of the medium frogs of course we caught there were literally a frog every 20 feet so we had many opportunities i took six of the medium ones and celebrated by eating those <laughs> in one sitting but uh miss is like how'd it go and i was like oh. by the way did they eat any of the frogs or no they, they didn't was, eat. i was asking too much I, they yeah, not gonna eat the frog yeah, it took my wife 20 years to try one <laughs> and only because i said it was chicken did she try it yeah. They're so delicious. <laughs> but Missy asked me that, and I, I said, babe, let me tell you what. I said, they, you know, we raised this much money for that family. And I told her, I was like, I'm a one-woman guy. I said, I made up my mind when I went out there because I knew just frog hunting, you get in awkward positions anyway. I said, but I looked from the neck up, and I never – now, they grabbed me many times just out of fear just because something would happen, you know? Like one time, the girl was going up there, and I went, nope, nope, That was because there was a snake beside the frog. Which happens a lot. Well, it happens, you know? But when she saw that, she just, like, grabbed me like she was going to die. You know? (laughs) I was like, you're fine. Well, no, Jace, no. you went up in that yuppie pool to find you a woman. A lot of them stick with the redneck crowd, but you you elevated. But your, you yeah. you That's exercise true. Job thirty one one, which by the way, people talk about character, and whenever I do a men's thing, I always do Job thirty one because Job was defending his character in Job thirty one. In the first verse in Job thirty one one, he says, "I made a covenant not to look lustfully at mm-hmm. a girl." 
with I made a covenant with my eyes yep. not to look lustfully at a girl. And that's what you did. Well, and, that, and I, I brought that up because when they walked in the door, I thought, I better make a covenant right now. Yep. You know, I mean, these these women were smoking, you know. And uh, I was like, this is because I just knew when you're you're in that situation, it's easy to kind of let your guard down, you know. But I thought about big picture, but and that's why I wanted to bring it up. I mean, you got to make the plan beforehand, and uh, then you turn it, I think, into a spiritual. Well, I thing. mean, and from a biblical perspective, I think it's up to the women to talk to women about being modest, but it's up to men to talk to men about making a covenant with your own yeah. eyes. And now, I, that's the way I what, what gets it. me excited about the outdoors, I love, because I've learned a lot through taking people in this situation, the time before, the other people that had gotten the charity, there was an 11-year-old boy there, and I could tell he had a troubled <clears throat> you know, life up until this point, and he just would not overcome his fear. I mean, he had never been in the wild, and he just, he just wouldn't, try to catch the frog i mean we went one right after another one and he started crying and he he was 11 and that's young but he was a big kid for 11 and i kept telling him i'm like you're gonna do this tonight you're gonna overcome your fears and you're gonna do that we'd get look i had the light some of them would just sit there and i have the light in the eyes and i was like we're gonna do this tonight it's just one grab because that's my dinner for tomorrow i want that frog you can do it and look finally after an hour he finally just and that's then he maybe turned into a frog whisperer yeah. after that. Yeah. He was snatching them from every angle, yeah. laughing. And I think he'll look back on that at moment. some point and say, you know what? Yeah, I can do this. So that, that really, it's exciting. Jace, I'm glad you were ramrodding that particular celebrity type of donating to the cause and we'll take a bunch of yep. I mean, I, you kind of moved I, on. I, you I, I'm not actually on that level anymore. <laughs> I, I, we used to, and it's still like the uh, you and mom. <clears throat> what I love about y'all is that I mean, we've had some. We went, did an event in Tulsa, and for a guy that we love, that's an elder at the church up there that has uh, ALS, and so we donated. Well, it was same deal. Started out one yeah. cooking with Miss K. And so then it was two at the event for the two. And then afterwards, somebody came by and said, I'll do the same price. I think it was $10,000 each. But that was thirty grand for this ALS Foundation that we were able to help and out. Most so of them, you we, still most do of them we do, Al, and y'all had them up, and then you, then you get in touch with us. But most of them is basically prayer for them and yeah. good food. That's right. We just say, well. Right. We let Jace do all the hard the yeah, spider that's, alley. That's, that's a, that's a Jace tough is, you know. But I like frog hunting and I like I like showing people that, you know, especially like them. And cuz one of them said this is so organic. And uh I said, "Look, we invented organic. Oh. We, we 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 protect the environment. We put money into it. I was like, we live off the land. You're never going to get a better meal than what we're doing right here. We were I organic don't care where before you organic go. was a thing. Yeah. It's just like me too. I was to dad that we were me too before this latest crop of people saying, well, you know, women are to be treated with respect. We've been, we've been saying that our whole lives. That's the <laughs> way we treat our, our wives and women, you know? Well, we'll run up on a hunter in our lesson today, Al, Esau. So, so, so by the way, we've had quite a bit of buzz uh, from you guys and we appreciate it. Uh, cause we had Willie make his debut on the podcast last week. And, uh, we were supposed to get to, to Jacob and Joseph, but you know, as you know, if you saw the podcast last time, we uh, we never really got past uh, what'd you call it, Dad? A stroll down memory lane. Well, I heard <laughs> things that I didn't even know happened under my watch. I hadn't laughed that hard in a long time, I have to say. And and I, obviously, you guys either, because I've been hearing from you all week. Uh, but so today, we want to go back and 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 dive a little bit into. The, it really starts in Genesis 26, and it goes through 50. That's, that's 25 chapters of the Bible. Obviously, we're going to tell it quick. But, you know, we've been talking about Abraham and sort of the seed line uh, quite a bit when we talked about him. These guys are part of the seed They're line. They're part of the seed line. He had a son, Isaac. We seed talked line to, meaning the seed line of Jesus. Earth I mean, line. the plan, Earth going is, back to Genesis 15, where he's like, through your family. All nations are going to be blessed. I mean, that was the promise, the plan. Right. And seeing it work out in history is pretty remarkable. People think the Bible is just some old book, but it's actually the historical aspects of it. And and to me, Jace, when we were in school, you know, we went to prison school, but 
what unlocked it for me was that big picture of understanding that yeah. God, God had a plan all the they way through. They called it the scheme of redemption, which yep. is a very clever yeah. phrase. Right. Yep. It, it was a scheme. And it was a scheme because that, it was unknown to so many. That's right. It was it? kept a mystery, and later on you find out that it was actually a mystery. I think it's 2 Corinthians 2 mm-hmm. says that. Because if the rulers of that age would have understood it and the evil forces and, you know, the the – evil one and all that, if they'd understood that, well, they wouldn't have crucified Jesus because that ultimately was their demise. God's plan was I'll save the world. And Al, if you think about it, it was all, every bit of it from right. start to finish, whether it was the being freed from Satan, being freed mm-hmm. from sin, being freed from guilt, right. being freed from law, being freed from the grave. Right. You say, he says, I've got this, I'll implement it, and I'll be the one to do it for you Right. because you cannot do this. It right. reminds I mean, how, me. How are you going to beat physical death on your own? I'll, with you all can't. the doctor visits, we all talk about it all the time. You say, but in the end, what about that old six-foot hole we're going That's into? Right. And you get to looking at it, you're like, whoo. And you'd have peace of mind while you're here because you know your sins are removed. You know you were set free from the evil one himself. So you talk about a plan coming together. But it reminds me, just like in the creation itself, where you see when you start looking at the details, that it leads you to mm-hmm. some kind of intelligent designer, you know, that we call God. Yep. The same thing in the Bible, when you look at the historical details and the, using these families and you go back the time and the you know, the sites that they've gone to, you you see that same pattern. You're like, Well, this couldn't you, you see that it couldn't be made up. Yeah, the, it's all found in the details. That's why I like what we're doing, going through the entire scheme of redemption. Yeah, and showing it. So, Abraham and Sarah, uh, they had Isaac, which was their only son, and we've talked about that. Uh, they had another son. Abraham did Ishmael, and we talked about the differences there, and sort of what happens when you try to kind of do an in run around the plan of God. That didn't turn out. And so the well. two leading religions. Thousands of Still years. Abraham's the father of the Arabs and the father That's right. of the Jews. Both. And the Gentiles were invited in. Right. Came so in so that. that all people could be blessed. You're like, man. And Gentiles meaning not a Jew. Not a Jew. That's Anybody. right. Well, we would be Gentiles. So Isaac, Isaac gets married to a woman named Rebecca, and she has twin boys. And so what happens is that Jacob and Esau are their names. And What's interesting about him is it's the same kind of deal that we see with Isaac and Ishmael. There was these two sons. Esau actually came out first, so he was the firstborn, although the seed line, the promise, was going to go through Jacob, which there had been a little prophecy there to Rebekah that, that, that God knew. It's, it's one of these hard situations because you're reading it in real time, but God sees it outside of time. So he, he gives her a heads up that Jacob is the one that's going to be blessed. And so there's this conflict that goes on between these two sons. To add to that, Esau comes out, and and Esau means red. And so he was red and hairy. So I imagine him, you know, you think of some redneck you see around here with big old guy, red hair, big, thick beard. Or or some some of the guys that that Leonard Skinner. There you go. There you go. That's right. Uh, so well, no, nobody in Leonard Skinner had red hair, though. But I mean, I mean, but there's a lot of <laughs> up hair in their younger days. <laughs> I knew where I'm you were saying going. Harry. I mean, I'm looking at the Harry part. <laughs> okay, I was. I'm like, wait a minute, was there a? Red well, I was thinking Leonard ZZ Skinner? Top, of course, but yeah, ZZ Top's a better illustration. There you go. They have a red tint. It, they had the, uh, but we noticed when they were with us, of course, you know, they're like, oh, it's your age now. They're my age, and their beards were orange. They were orange, but you could tell it was they was they those weren't natural. No, no. <laughs> well, I, they spent a little time at the, in look. the makeup room. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't kiddle give it an all on bad when they ate. By the way, they well, came. Phil, they they have visited us, and they 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 ordered the food they wanted. They said we want squirrel because we. You know, you know, rock and rollers. They 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 just squirrel was not on the menu at most places <laughs> that they traveled. I said we will have squirrel, so we had squirrel and dumplings. I remember, but I did notice they weren't just 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 licking the bowl. They, were, <laughs> they well, tried so I, it. I think that was their first squirrel. Actually. It probably yes, was first squirrel. You they know, we, got, we just got invited. I don't know if anybody went, but 
we got invited to their 50th anniversary of being a yeah, band. Yeah, I saw that. I, uh, I would have loved to have gone. I had an event. I, I did too. Oh. I was busy, but that would have been fun to go to. Think about those guys. Yeah, they were rocking. great. They're great guys. They really I, I'm were. always pleased when I meet somebody that I listened to when I was, you know, 14. And they turned out to be such great guys. I did good. ask them when they pull up. They pull up in two very expensive, look like trailway buses, but. But but spiffed up. Oh yeah. Well, they had what but two of them, and they they pull up, and and one gets out of one bus and one gets out of the other. I said, "What's with the two buses? Why don't we just ride in one?" And he said, "We've been playing rock and roll since '69, and it's like a marriage. It went south. It's Jacob and Esau. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's just Jacob like and Will Esau. And, you know, yeah. we got the Jacob and Esau thing out here in the yard. <laughs> they were just saying we it's get along with our own bus. We get along better when you're like, you got your bus and I got mine, buddy. <laughs> and I think they can afford it. So. Well, they were I great guys. That, they said it, and we all had. Yeah, they, yeah. they were laughing. I think laughing. it's good. We're talking about a story that happened." You know, ten thousand years ago, or <laughs> yeah. however long, but it's the same principle. It I is. mean, it's Willie crazy. and I were way too close in age. I can't imagine having twins. Well, there's twins. So, but. so Esau is a hunter. Uh, Jacob loves him because he goes out and he brings him wild game, and and we can all relate to that. Sure. Uh, mm-hmm. Jacob, he was described as a he he liked to hang around the tents was the way he was described. So I imagine him as a little more artsy. He was red, and his whole body was like a hairy garment. That was Esau. Esau yeah. yeah, so they named him Esau, which means hairy. That's why I brought up ZZ Top and <laughs> so the, Leonard Skinner. <laughs> I got it. They were, hairy, they were hairy guys back in the 60s. And you're a hairy guy. But the so funny I'm part a hairy guy. was hey. you not wanting to make fun of ZZ Top's <laughs> it's biblical. appearance looking like you do. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. All can I we... can say, Al, it is biblical. <laughs> In this case, Esau did not fare so well, well with he God. Didn't. But he didn't. Hey. He's, he was godless, as we read about later. Esau's problem was is he was driven by the moment. Um, there were two things that basically happened in old Jewish tradition. Is you, you got two things from your father. The first thing you got was your, was your birthright, which was basically just the oldest getting a double inheritance. And the reason you did that is he was responsible for taking care of their family. I mean, the yeah. oldest born... Was the guy. So if you had a sister that lost her husband, you got more, but the idea was It to was share. a glimpse of the patriarchal system. Exactly. But it also shows just personalities because he, like you said, he, uh, you know, Jacob hung around the tents, which I guess would be like the mall of the, you know, <laughs> right. he, he, and here's Esau out in the woods. That was a kind of a are, kind of a crude <laughs> uh, suburban type. That's right. Right. Yeah. But people he, ask he me all that. There. All the time, they're like, would well, your other brothers hunt? They they assume we all duck hunt like I do. Jacob but, was, was not roaming around out in the wild, in the no, woods like he's out. But it was like, our, look at our look at all the four brothers. Yeah. Well, I duck hunt every day. I have since I was eight. But yep. you go some. Willie maybe. goes once a year, maybe. maybe right. only, only if we're filming. Yeah, I mean, but now Willie's into deer hunting. But right. still, I mean, like, he's I guess, not a man. Willie's not a man of the open country. That's right. No. But yeah. like you and Jeff were kind of mall roamers. Well, I've called I mean, myself you, Jacob and a family of Esau's. That was my yeah. little tagline because yeah, right. I shaved and bathed. And you know, but it yeah. gets me back to you know when you have kids. I got I got three. I mean, three kids, not counting the ones we've acquired and adopted or whatever. But <laughs> they they're all so totally different. There's no manual. I mean, you just can't believe it. I mean, my my two oldest boys are the exact opposite. Yeah. I mean, one of them is very quiet, very studious, very reserved. My older one is alive. So what Jace is saying is historically, it it is what it is. It is what it is. It just is what it is, but God works in those situations no matter what it is. So so God gave the glimpse because when they were in the womb, by the way, before they were born— you know, she's feeling them, Rachel, is, I mean, she's feeling them wrestling around in there. And uh, Rebecca, I mean, feel them wrestling around there. And he says that's like two warring nations because Esau is going to follow the same path as Ishmael. And the Edomites was his lineage. Well, they were some bad hombres, you know, oh, same yeah. deal. So they were a thorn in the flesh for Israel. So it's the same kind of thing growing out as it's not just them and the way they were, but when their their patronage went through and their, their, their legacies – Esau's was not good. It was a people that had a lot of problems, you know, yep. and it really went back to his base there. So, so I said he gets a birthright. The second thing he gets is a blessing, and the blessing would come from the patriarch at the end of his life. 
That was the idea that, you know, just like we would do now. Like if you were at the end of your life and we came in, was like, you know, it's been a good run, Dad, and you, and you were to say, you know, you boys, you know, I want you to carry my legacy. You would bless us in the sense that we're now carrying your torch. Mm -hmm. So that was the two things. Well, unfortunately for we've Esau, never had that meeting yet. But we hadn't it, had it. We well, may get down to it. We might. <laughs> it's yeah. coming at some point. <laughs> I mean, Phil, I'm 73. <laughs> like uh, I'm running out of time. <laughs> well, at least, least on the Phil first. And I both looked at you our watches, and, and we've never had one. I've never owned a watch, and somebody so says, "This is the difference between Jacob and Esau." Somebody so says, saying. "How come you never uh, owned a watch?" And I said. Said, I don't want to see it happening. Time passes. I'd rather not see it. So I'm oblivious to time where it won't threaten me. Because, you know, you start dating everything, Al. Boy, you, well, run out of, you run out of time in the a hurry. The you problem know? is you have to have somebody around you that, ha that knows that. Fortunately for <laughs> us, uh, biblically speaking, and we're looking at a couple of guys way back, uh, biblically speaking, boys, this is just this age. Right. That's what right. Jesus called it. This age, right. this age will leave, and there's another one just on the other side. Well, it's right. like the verse you read last week when, when you is. talked about we're all like grass, you know, which people, because somebody said, what did he mean? Because they didn't, you, you, you didn't really explain the concept, which I, I just assume. The grass I, withers. Well, right. We're just, <laughs> we're all humans are like a blade of grass. I mean, you come up, and it, it's, there it went. It goes it, so fast. Gone. It was over. Just One like, of my favorite rants you do, though, Phil, is when you talk about well, you don't have a watch and you like talk about the different times it is. Yeah. <laughs> you know, daylight, dark, <laughs> sunrise, dinner, sunset. Lunch. It alleviates dinner. <laughs> stress when you say, I'll see you about sundown. Yeah. You're not waiting on the minute. The sundown is a little time factor, so I'm not – Holding yeah. you to the exact second. That is minute. like when I'll I'll call and say, "What time are we meeting?" You know, to go duck hunting, and he'll say about an hour for daylight. Because a lot of people would be like, "Do what now?" Yeah, what does that mean? <laughs> when is daylight? So whenever the sun is coming up, you need to be here an hour before that. Yeah, that's right. But I guess that's a different kind of language. Well, the, the problem is we're world. going by the the. Laws, you have to know the minute. You know, when we're in the blind, somebody's got to be saying, so I realize we got one I'm minute. just saying, savings there's time doesn't affect you. There's less stress if you go by my to right now, it's mid morning, right? It'll wait a little bit, it'd be midday, <laughs> then, then, it, then it's after dinner, is what we call it. It's nap time and after Why is it so try. funny to me? I don't know, it's just because <laughs> you ask Phil what time it is, and he just. <clears throat> a yeah. far away look goes into it. He doesn't know. There's something fun to explain. Well, experience. you think if you didn't have a clock, yeah, you wouldn't know. I've never <clears> owned a watch. That's pretty Because the first thing I do when I wake up is look at a clock. I'm trying to figure out what time it is. Well, that's why when I when y'all were but you look outside. Y'all were pont yeah, y'all were pontificating <laughs> about me being not normal. <laughs> then it then it occurred to me. I started looking in ways I wasn't normal and then the watch thing come up the time count and I thought, well, Maybe See, I'm a little bit half above the law on some things. You like being not normal. Oh, no, you're That's a lot right. more than half. Well, yeah. <laughs> so, so Jacob uh, and Esau, to, to me, is the big point out of their lives is this. <clears throat> Jacob turned out good, but it took him a while. The name Jacob means deceiver, and the way he went about he stole, by the way, Esau's birthright and his blessing. Yeah, they tricked him. They, they tricked he, him. he wore like a sheep's. Uh, By the way, Al, a goat's hair. Would you yeah, agree that hair. all the characters of the Old Testament, and we're looking at the seed line of Jesus coming through and the story unfolding <clears throat> on how Jesus ended up based on Genesis three fifteen, somebody born of a woman would would crush Satan. You look at all these characters. Would y'all agree that that God took pains or made sure? He made sure that everyone presented, all of the patriarchs of old, the, the men of faith, the righteous, mm -hmm. all of them, it does show out from the first to the last their flaws. Yep. That it does, God does show, yep. even with righteous men, the hall of faith, you know, right. and you have all these names, you know, starting with Abraham, you know, Noah and Abraham all the way through. Well, you say, but God did show that mm -hmm. all of them were. They made mistakes. Oh, I think that's the hardest principle to get over. Because like when I first heard this story, I was so disappointed because as a hunter and an outdoorsman, I wanted Esau 
To be the good guy. To be the good because I'm Me like, too. I'm that guy. I don't <laughs> like Jacob. Me too. <laughs> Mr. Hanging around That's in the, the way tents. I felt. Yeah, I'm out Mr. of the tent. So basically, yeah. from this, from Esau getting the axe, I said, well, I better shut up and sit down. <laughs> but here's the point. God knew the heart for the whole time. This is, this is a great picture of God, how he's outside of our purview. It is true. Because we look at a scenario like this, and it was unfair what happened to Esau. Yep. Yeah. It really was. Now, part of it was his own... He gave away his birthright over a bowl of soup. Yep. Well, that was stupid. But I tell you this, Phil. I know you thought the same thing I do. There's you cannot be more exhausted than when you go hunting all day. I don't know what yeah. it is and about you come it. In You're I can go work. Yeah. You know, I've worked. So you can you can relate Look, to him. Giving I've it away. hauled firewood. <laughs> I've roofed houses. I've done all these jobs. You know, back in the day. But when you go hunting, because people, oh, you get to hunt. You know, all the time. Oh, it's exhausting. How many times have you heard me say, especially if we're slogging, just falling down and get, going through the mud and trying to hide to get ducks and all of the goes with it, how many times have you noticed that when we finally get ready to get out of here that we're asking, we'll say, I'll say, call Miss Kay and ask her what she's got on the spit. So, oh, I, look, I, it, it, in those what's, moments. What's for, what's, what, do we get, what kind of food do we have? Look, in those moments of exhaustion, just over the last, you know, 40 years of hunting, I have, when I finally got somewhere where the meal was prepared, I have eaten almost like supernatural amounts of food. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm just eating cheeseburgers like they're chips, you know? Yeah. So you, you're, it can be a pot of beans, but in this case it was beans. And one thing we have realized that a hot meal in a duck blind is oh, like, it's, oh. better. it's better than anything. Well, I'll tell you this. Look, you can take any food. Like right now, if I had a can of Vienna sausage and I ate one, it would make me gag. Now, I don't know whether I would sell my birthright <laughs> Over right. a bowl well, of soup. So here's the difference. Because that was a big deal. Here's the back difference. In these but days. you put it in a duck blind in that moment, it's good. I can see how you can relate to it. But here's the difference, and here's what I observe about you two in particular, is that because we challenge hunters all the time, and I know we know a lot of families that have had major problems because of people's passion for the outdoors, and the reason why is they forgot two important things, and Esau did too. They, they, your relationship with God is always more important. Yeah. yeah, that's why we always talk about you hunt every day. But Sundays, we always make sure we go meet with the brothers. That's just saying, God, you're number one over my hunting or anything else. And the second thing is our families. And so I've seen guys before get so passionate about outdoors, whether it's fishing or hunting, no doubt. that they that they don't give the Almighty the credit and they don't take care of their families. I, no- I noticed that when I traveled for the first 28 years, went shoeless for seven several years. No shoes, just reach and get it. Tape your britches legs to your ankles where you could run fast from various things and various people. <laughs> I'll tell you, you know, if somebody said I'm a game warden, I'm like, yeah, that's what I thought you were. <laughs> I'm gone. But but during those days, I didn't take God to the woods with me, Al. Yeah. It was me. I was like Esau. That's a great point. I was out in the woods. I was roaming. I was free to go 10 miles I, I'd, I'd have them drop me off, park another vehicle 10 miles away, and, and they knew I would make the trip through the woods. Right. Well, you take some of these forests back in those days, they, didn't, they weren't cut, very few roads, and I was in the, I mean, mm-hmm. in the big woods. Right. But I was coming 10 miles at a stretch. But I noticed, unlike Esau, when I did bring God, it's amazing. I have a I have a show now. It's called In the Woods. That's right. We feel because I've been in them my entire life. Right. But I was in them, and I brought God in with me. That's right. To be with me. Well, I always at, looked at, at it twenty eight like, on. To it's it. a great point. It's, it's his, way better. It, right. You're in His woods. That's right. I mean, that was the mindset I had at some point when the light switch came on. Way better once God went with me. Way way better. Well, yeah, and then you you know think about how many actual introductions to Jesus we've had in the duck blind. I mean, oh. We've baptized people in the decoys. I'm I mean, really? like, I ain't leaving here. I'm like, I mean, so? cold days, like 30 <laughs> yeah, degrees. Like, buddy, it's cold. And their little butts were blue. <laughs> <laughs> I so, said, Take, come out of them clothes like, like you come out from your mama. And they're like, what? I said, why wait? Let's go right now. And they're like, 
all right. So they come out of their clothes, a couple of guys from Marshall, Texas. They still call me from time to time and say, man, that was the wildest baptism. And we tell people what happened. Y'all went out there and just st- knocked some brush out of the way. Like and down it. we so, went. So here's the verse that that goes to what you said, Hebrews 12, 16. See that no one is sexually immoral or is godless like Esau. Yep. The Hebrew writers use him as that godless who for a single meal sold his inheritance rights as the oldest son. Afterwards, as you know, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, yep. he was rejected. And here's the key. He could bring about no change of mind, yep. though he sought the blessing with tears. Never, he, that never. was his problem. His heart was never right. I was on the same path exactly. until 28, and I said, wait a minute. I'm, I'm, I'm living without God here. What, right. what am I doing? Right. But you could go back to Esau and so say, that's what he should have done. So Jacob, he should have had a moment. He should have had a moment. Jacob did have a moment, which is why, of course, God knew this all along. He was middle-aged, and he had, of course, you can imagine, Esau wanted to kill him after he got these things run. So they had a terrible relationship. Jacob goes off. He winds up marrying four women. That's a whole long story. He has 12 sons. Too many women. Too many women. 12 sons, blended family that didn't blend at all. I said it's not a blended. It was a blender yep. with that family. But God blessed him. That last wife he got was Rachel, which is oh, actually she was the second wife, but she had his last two kids, Joseph and Benjamin. And he had a change of heart. Genesis 32, he wrestled all night with God because he was about to face remember Esau. That. Remember that? Yep. So he's about to face him, and he, he thought, man, I, I've been a deceiver my whole life, and that's what his name meant. And so after he wrestled with God, something happened to his hip. Now, by the way, when you wrestle with God, there's some agent there. I, I don't <laughs> yeah. know. You uh, may come out crippled up. Well, <laughs> well, there's a spiritual aspect there was a spiritual battle going on but but there yep. was a something physical about it because he he hurt his hip so he had i a think le- that was more of a reminder it was the I mean, limp. That's, you yeah. know the well, it says I, that well yeah. it says it was a reminder because from that point on whenever they would make a sacrifice there was some something they would do to the hip of a sacrifice because of jacob's deal this night but here's the here's the point his name changed that night after he had this wrestling session with god he was about to go face esau the next day and so God changed his name from Jacob, the deceiver, to Israel, the chosen. And so what I take from that is any of us, character can be changed. I mean, you can be raised yeah. a certain way. You talked about that. I mean, you were a certain way until you embraced Christ, and then I, you were something different. And I literally had a wrestling match with the Almighty. That's right. Or whether I was going to bow to him or right. not. When my moment came, just like he is. Right. You see what I'm saying? Exactly. Oh, I was the same way. I mean, y'all know me. I was so shy. I mean, you know, I didn't say 40 words till I was 10 years old. <laughs> yeah, right. And, you know, I just, he, he changed my complete character. So And mine too, because I, mean, I, I was a deceiver <laughs> a lot of my early life. Everyone like, has the wrestling match with God or whether right. they're going to bow to him or not. It's just when, when are you going to give in? You know, some people take a long time to get there. But, I mean, what I see from this story is that, you know, God is great at everything, but he specializes in making things right when things have gone terribly wrong. True. Because a lot of these characters that who were real people in the Bible, I mean, people start thinking, you know, I can never, you know, God can never accept me. I've done too bad of things. You just start naming the characters in the Bible and what they've done. It's horrific. I mean, you. it's like, how in the world are you going to make this right? But he does. He does. That's why I brought up the point about he makes sure that everyone sees the flaws because we all have them. I think that's the key really to living a a Jesus-focused life is realizing that fact that he's going to use me despite these flaws. Yep. Because that's why people always say, well, you know, what what do I do about my – I've heard Jesus, but I keep sinning and I keep messing up. But I'm like, well, he knows your heart, but he's going to keep using you. Right. In spite of those flaws. Yep. Right. So Jacob had them. Esau had them. So what about Joseph I, I, when he well, comes on so, the scene? So uh, we're about out of time today, so we're going to get to Joseph next week. But basically, Jacob has 12 sons who become the 12 tribes of Israel that we'll talk about as we go forward. But what a story with Joseph. But what I mean, a story with Joseph. Whoa. In fact, you know, Joseph is half the book of Genesis. So yeah. we got to talk about him. So we're going to talk about him next time. He was unique uh, in a lot of different ways. He was smart enough to run from the fine babes. 
He did. I mean, well, <laughs> yeah. he he left the king. He, he left a, the king right with his jacket. Which goes in into my story. Yeah, which, which goes into my story. story. You always yeah. watch the situation that you're in. I mean, look, I remember I had a Bible study with a very nice looking woman one time. That there were other people there, and I like felt something on my leg, and I looked down, and she's rubbing my leg with her foot. And I'm yeah. looking at her. This, I'm, like, I'm sharing Jesus with her. This is going beyond the Bible study. Yeah. That's for sure. And I said, you know what? This study is over. And she's like, well, I want to hear more. And I'm like, yep. And when you can find you some sister, we'll find you a sister. But making a move on me while yeah. we're doing this. Foot, foot rubs don't that go with Under the stuff. table, that's out. It's time <laughs> to go. I remember we were having a photo shoot in Los Angeles, California. Jace was seated next to me. And we're seated in chairs, and Uh-oh. our wives were behind us. And look, <laughs> and we look up, and at the same time, two fine LA's, uh, LA's finest, two two women came and look. It was a mother we, and a daughter. Mother and a daughter. Before we could even move, out, they're in our lap. Yeah, it just yeah. in our lap, and I'm like, whoa, ho, ho. And I, I mean, I'm looking at it from a redneck deal. Our women are standing right behind us. I yeah. said, boy, these these girls got some gall out here in California. And yeah, that didn't go over well with Missy. Well, no, my know, wife was not. Now look, you left out a couple <laughs> points of that story. I think we were actually on that cruise. I tried to get, I yeah, tried to get that behind me, Jay. Uh, the, they looked like supermodels. They did. And they said, can we stay up here? Because everybody was going behind us and taking a picture. Yep. And I said, sure. Well, I didn't know that meant right here in our lap. That's right. And, and so, I didn't want to throw this woman <laughs> off and hurt her. Well, but but yeah, I, I well, would of just, course not. of course, I could hear the clicking on the cameras, you know. They said, yeah, we got him now where we want him. And it would yeah, click, click, with my click, wife click, sitting behind with me. With my wife sitting but behind me. But here here's scout. where I took Miss K wrong. was pinching me on the neck. And I mean, but I, well, I said, what, am I, what do you want me to do? Throw her up to her? Beat her up? <laughs> Phil, here's, here's where we got into trouble on that. It wasn't that those two. And you wonder why California turned out like it did. <laughs> <laughs> we were on a cruise ship. It wasn't that the two women did that. It was our response. You were like, well, I didn't want to hurt her. And my response was, the only reason you're mad, babe, is because she looked like a supermodel. Yeah, That was a terrible thing to say. Yeah, that was, oh, she, yeah. I should have said, babe, I don't know. You know, yeah, it hey. happens so fast. And, California. You know. Well, we had to, after, as I recall, we had a little uh, conversation with the uh, handlers after that. <laughs> no more. Yeah, I noticed that. No more lap lap. City. But even more yeah. bizarre is that two women looking like that would have anything would, you know, that's what to I'm do trying with to us out. in a like personal space invasion uh, moment. Well, it just goes to show you that apparently Esau's are popular with some of the ladies. So yep. there you go. All right, so uh, that's uh, that's the Jacob story today. Next time we'll get a little bit into um, some of his sons and uh, just more stories of the same. Like you said, people with flaws that God uses for great things. So appreciate you being on Unashamed with Phil Robertson and uh, let some others know about it. So we're so glad you guys were with us today. You can subscribe on iTunes or Spotify or YouTube or Facebook and be sure and rate us on iTunes so that other people can know about the podcast.